Throughout his decade with two cartels, El Pozolero, or the Soup Man, dissolved up to a thousand bodies in vats of acid. Whoa. Breaking Whoa. Bad is nothing compared to real life. When he was finally arrested, a horrible stench filled his room. He told the police officers he was making seafood soup. Wait, yeah, wait a minute. That wasn't seafood soup. So abstain from eating any kind of soup as you watch this outrageous video and delve into the story of Santiago Mesa, AKA El Pozolero. El Pozolero. El Movies Pozolero. often show the glamorous side of cartels, the money, power and status that only the top of the pyramid gets to live in but behind the scenes few things are as dark brutal and downright gruesome as yeah, cartels people don't really talk about how crazy and gruesome santiago meza get. lopez had a modest background he was a poor farmer's boy and it's liked animals. like that though. in fact it was his love of animals that brought him to the cartels that and a desperate need for cash santiago started working with the ariana felix cartel in 1996 he tended to their horses and did their masonry work it was honest work that simply paid better compared to anything he could do on his farm but you know how cartels promise you endless riches for just a little bit of dirty work that's always the hook they yeah, can kill or get carry you out a sketchy drug deal within months you'll be rich sadly Santiago fell into this trap, and before long, he was conducting narcotics deals for Ariano Felix. First, he was their dealer, El then he was their drug office keeper. He was disciplined and dedicated, and Felix encouraged this by promoting him. As he surveilled the depots around Tijuana toward the end of the century, the Ariano cartel started a bloody war with the notorious Sinaloa Ooh. cartel. Both Ooh. cartels wanted control over the same trafficking routes into the U.S., but there's nothing simple about cartel fights, constant attacks, yes, assassinations were terrorizing Mexico. Everybody dies when the cartels are fighting. Like, it's a crazy war zone. Just a few short years. But what do you do with all the bodies if you're a cartel boss and you don't want the police on your tail? In a really creepy twist, you the thousands of victims opened up a job opportunity for Santiago. In the late 1990s, the Ariano Felix brothers, Ramon and Benjamin, invited Santiago to a secluded spot. They asked him to do a little experiment with them. They handed him a leg of beef and asked him to toss the leg into a container. The vat was filled with caustic soda also known as lye, mixed with water and some other chemicals. They left Santiago with the container and told him to watch over the beef while they took care of other business. A few hours later, Santiago would confirm their experiment worked out the way they had intended it to. The leg of beef was completely dissolved, only coloring the liquid Ooh. inside to the container a crimson red. It was gross, I really but it was nothing what, the fuck what was about to happen. Six months later, the Ariano Felix brothers revealed to Santiago what the experiment was about. He was going to carry out their dirtiest work, dissolve their Bro. enemies. You already know lie. what's the up. Brothers had asked they want you to dissolve bodies and shit. Without disposing of corpses. They were in over their heads quite literally in war victims and simply dumping them in shady spots wasn't working anymore. The it wouldn't because the cops will always come back for your ass. So they could arrest the Tijuana cartel bosses at the end of the war. Now, Ramon and Benjamin had Santiago dissolve his first human body. Several henchmen were watching. If this worked, this would be their future method for all their enemies. Santiago undressed the body and stuffed it into a large drum filled with the same mixture as before except this time how gruesome is that how do you how can you do that burner was lit up and the mixture started to froth santiago left it overnight to cook when he returned to the vat in the morning there was nobody inside just a red sludge and some tiny bone fragments decorating the bottom of the container el pozolero was born before you ask no pozolero doesn't literally mean soup man it comes from pozole a traditional mexican soup made with corn and meat. I know, El Pozolero ruined the dish forever. I don't think anybody's gonna be enjoying that. After that, El Pozolero notified like the Ariano Felix brothers of their successful experiment, they called in their truck driver. He took the container and drove it to a nearby canyon in the dead of night. He tossed the remains in there and carried the container back to the cartel headquarters. This would be the Tijuana cartel's preferred method of dealing with their bodies. Yeah, I feel like that's Santiago better though, you know, than keeping cleaner. like a whole El Pozolero body. El was in charge of everything. Buying oil containers, caustic soda, latex gloves, and gas masks. Everything about this job was simply horrifying. And El Pozolero seemed to be completely desensitized to it. Maybe he was even getting a kick out of it. Now he was working directly under drug lord Teodoro Garcia Sentao, aka El Teo. He would send El Pozolero a text message with a location every time he had a new body that he needed to get rid of. Yo, El like people would arrive at just a specific specific bodies location, like it ain't but nothing, it wouldn't be a simple know? exchange. A cohort of cars would pull up, and he would be called to find out which car the body was in. Then, two henchmen would help Pozolero carry the body into his vehicle 
and he would drive off to his lab. There he would take care of the It's just crazy body. how Sometimes everything is desensitized by these cartels. When they like done, just kill people. take the bone remains and throw them into huge Oh, he is smart now, guy though. El Posadero had his own graveyard and business was booming in the worst sense of the word. But as always, nothing lasts forever. El Teo was a ruthless, violent, and a headstrong man. This caused several hiccups between him and the Ariano Felix brothers. In 2008, it all came to a boiling point. El Teo decided to switch sides and join the biggest rival cartel around oh, El Chapo Sinatello. and El Mayo's oh, Sinaloa. Sinaloa. And since El Posadero was his man, he took him with him. This is how El Posadero became the Sinaloa cartel's chief body disposer too. This is creepy on so many levels. He was dissolving the bodies of his former colleagues, oh, but he didn't seem to whoa. care. El Posadero made $600 a week in his time and place. Bro, that didn't even a lot of money, bro. He could afford almost anything he wanted. And he had achieved a disturbing kind of stardom in the cartel world. But his gruesome work stint with the Sinaloa cartel would come to a swift end in less than a year. In January 2009, Mexican authorities tracked him down after an anonymous tip pointed them in his direction. When the officers barged in, he was stirring something, smelling horrible. He was dead drunk and slurring his words. When the officers asked him about his concoction, he claimed it was seafood soup. Oh my you can gosh. only imagine what it really was. After his arrest, however, El Pozolero decided to confess. He told the detectives he had dissolved around 300 bodies, Whoa. but it's believed the actual number is over a thousand. The case made the headlines throughout Mexico. El Pozolero was pictured as a macabre soup master who had done the cartel's bidding for over a decade. No questions asked. Damn. El Pozolero's wife commented to the media. He would say, I prefer my job than for my family to die of hunger. Was facts really though, no facts though, I give him that. Like you gotta, if you gotta Santiago feed your, your family, police went on to, to me that's justifiable, bro. Burial site called the I'm chicken. sorry, like I ain't, I ain't no heartless motherfucker, but 500 pounds, whoa, bones, whoa, and bone remains were extracted whoa. by 2017. Whoa. The creepy catch was that the chicken coop really was used to raise chickens too. It was a little farm along the free highway to Tecate and it worked as a perfect mask for the El Pozolero's horrible affairs. But only 70 of El Pozolero's many, many bodies were dissolved at the chicken coop. 16,500 liters of human matter had been extracted from all over Tijuana. Human sludge had been poured out from the containers in every empty Dude, this nigga was really area. doing the Imagine work all like the that. Remains that still haven't been found. All the victims that will forever remain nameless. Whoa. Thanks to the cartel's gruesome disposal method. That's like What's the most worse, painful El part Pizzoletto of it. taught others how it's to like dissolve bodies. He even the installed a drainage system during his last years on the job, making the process cleaner and easier for his disciples. He spoke about this with the investigators. It was the devil to move them. They weighed a lot. After everything was cleaned up, we stored the barrels. We also washed the drain with hot water because the remains stuck to the pipes. He spoke about it like it was just another job, complaining about all the physical work. And when the officers asked him if he had any remorse for what he did, he said, of course. He even told the cartel he didn't want to do the job anymore. But you can't really say no to cartel bosses. Yeah, you can't El Pozoleto really also insisted that he never killed any of his victims and that he never dissolved the bodies of women and children. In 2012, he was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison. During his trial, he said that he was not a dealer, a killer, or a monster. He was just a man doing his job for a cartel that wouldn't take no for an answer. In his yeah, last statement, yeah, yeah, he yeah. God you really can't say no to these cartels if they want you to do something. But like, you gotta do it or you're gonna die and your family's gonna remains. get it too. So the victim's you families were not pleased with his apology. They said it can't be genuine if he was not willing to help the police. Furthermore, how the many fuck? of these families were Y'all talking crazy. Do you know how crazy it is to go against the cartels? In their opinion, it doesn't Let alone the Sinaloa cartel. Bro, let alone fuck around y'all saw the video this i did should be much harsher than 10 years. about el chino he got el killed by el mayo he would probably die if he told the police about hell the yeah he's big gonna kill his ass this is not an excuse for all the atrocities he committed under their instruction he took the job in the first place to this day, the Mexican police are still retrieving bone remains in the Tijuana area. It's hard to even imagine the scale of the cartel's wars, the victims, and El Pozoleto's body Who knows how many people are still doing what he did in 2009? Was El Pozoleto an evil criminal, insensitive to pain and suffering? Or was he a simple person caught at the wrong place at the wrong time, in a web of Whoa, yeah, I would say that. and intimidation? And if so, could he have ever gotten out were it not for his arrest?
Oh, well, you know, here's the thing that I, I noticed about these cartels is that you cannot do what you want to do with them. They tell you what to do. And I don't think he was a bad person per se, but I think, yes, he got caught up with the bad, you know, with the most uh, autocratic, you know, leaders and group, you know. The, the, here's the thing. These people are living under, like, harsh living conditions, all right? So desperation for money comes at a high you know i'm um, demand you know these people they are suffering so whatever you can to provide for your family you're gonna do it i'm sorry like i can sort of understand where he's coming from you feel me like he had to provide for his family and then now the the most fucked up part is that he had to dissolve bodies he's not even the one that came up with a whole mixture of chemicals to dissolve these bodies he was just told like blindly he was led into this thing you understand me? i don't necessarily think that he's a bad person yes the actions were were fucked up but if you know the cartels and their capabilities bro you're gonna try to do whatever they want you to do or else your family is gonna get killed which in the first place is what you wanted to provide for or you're gonna get killed and nobody's gonna provide for your family and if they kill you they're still gonna kill your family so basically just associating with them or doing any bidding for them from the get-go you know the only way to leave that space is death you understand me and they don't take no for an answer if they want you to do something they're gonna make you do it or you're gonna die that's just how it goes because to them if you say no or if you go out and then they just let you walk off like that to them it's like a form of weakness so so we are weak now we just let you do whatever you want you understand me so do i think um el pezoro yeah the soup man was a bad person was a monster i don't i generally don't think so his actions are wrong and they're messed up but he just had to do the job or else he was gonna get killed these people were already killed you understand me they were already dead so he had no choice or he's gonna be part of them too you understand me so i don't know you guys tell me what you guys think about the superman and do you think he was a bad person was he a monster or he was just doing this thing to you know support his family and potentially not get killed by the sinaloa cartel you know so tell me what you guys think but i'm gonna catch you on the next one